the prohibition of the African National Congress, the Pan-Africanist Congress, the South African Communist Party, and a number of subsidiary organizations is being rescinded. Before the anti-apartheid reforms of the late 1980s, the South African government ostracized anyone with an opposing view. Two of those people were Garth Owen Smith and Margaret Jacobson. They chose to move north and west to Namibia. Namibia contains the world's oldest desert, the Cocoa Veldt, home to two of the most endangered species on Earth, the desert elephant and the black rhinoceros. In the early 1980s, the rhino and the elephant were close to extinction. Poachers, lured by the lucrative black market, slaughtered these animals indiscriminately for their horns and tusks. The results were devastating. The elephant population fell from 1,000 to just 250. The rhino's fate was even worse, from 350 to less than 65. How is this possible? Namibia is one of the least populated places on Earth. Poachers could roam freely and kill at will. With the very small number of people that we had in the area to try and control this poaching, it would be impossible to stop this poaching unless we got the help and the active participation of the local community, the people living in that area. Profoundly affected by the wildlife massacre, Owen Smith, a conservationist, and Jacobson, an anthropologist, started meeting with the local Himba, Herrera, and Damara residents to support a conservation effort. As newcomers, they sought to gain local trust. They asked for the local views, concerns, and suggested solutions to ending the brutal poaching. In 1983, the Auxiliary Game Guard was devised. It's an unarmed network of local patrols. These semi-nomadic herdsmen continue their daily lives, but at the same time, watch the arid countryside for poachers. The system has been a dramatic success. Instead of just government and their agents um, enforcing the law, we have the community playing an active role, and this uh, team that we, that we built up was, I think, the way that, um, that this uh, illegal hunting was brought under control. Today, poaching is nearly non-existent. The populations of the desert elephant, the black rhinoceros, and many other species are on the rise. And with more animals, come more tourists. Large groups are traveling here for a chance to see some of the magnificent wildlife and landscape. Recognizing this, Jacobson started the Puros Project, as a way for these newly empowered conservationists to benefit from their efforts. We had two tour operators in the, in the area and we basically approached them for a tourist levy, a sort of per head tax um, to, to give to the people in whose area they were, they were operating, um, seeing the people as caretakers of the wildlife. Like the Game Guard program, the Puros Project is regarded as a model, a remarkable example of a community-based conservation program. And as Garth and Margie see it, the community deserves the credit. We're part of a team. I think that's the whole um, basis of what has been achieved in that area. It's, not, it's certainly not being individuals. Um, we've all played a role, and if we can claim uh, any personal attributes, it would simply be that we have stuck in there. For Outstanding Environmental Achievement in Africa, a 1993 Goldman Environmental Prize is awarded to Garth Owen Smith and Margaret Jacobson of World's End, Namibia. <laughs>